Texas Podcast Massacre contains spoilers and adult language. For more horror, visit us at our website at texaspodcastmassacre.com. Welcome to another episode of Texas Podcast Massacre, coming to you from Houston, Texas. I'm your host, Mitch, and with me as always are my co-hosts, Lisa. Down to Castle Rock. And Nate. Not deaf, perfect. Ugh, I do not want to go into an echo chamber with you, Nate. (laughs) Or silence, whatever the hell they called it. No, I'll just lock you in one. So it's fine. That's fine. Is it a sound deprivation chamber, I think? Something like that. Something like that. I don't know. That's. A, I've read about them though. They're really creepy. That's there's a, fa- a lot of mumbo jumbo happening. That's for sure. Yeah, I am really excited about making our studio look just like that. What um, do you mean mumbo but- jumbo? Those exist. No, the the things he was saying before he got them in the chamber is oh. like that's all that's all trash. Like yeah. <laughs> that's just garbage. Also, no, I you- don't care how old you are. Okay, don't follow two weirdos into an RV. That is a solid what I would do differently. Would not that. Absolutely. Well, before we get too much into me, we're obviously chomping at the bit. Uh, welcome to another bonus episode of Texas Podcast Massacre, where each Thursday we are reviewing an episode of Castle Rock. Um, this uh, this week we are talking about episode six. I don't remember. Filter. The, was it? Filter. You never Filter. remember. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. No, you, you you barely got the number, but you could never get the episode <laughs> title. It's impossible. You know, I do a little better every week, Nate. I don't know what to tell you. Um, <laughs> that's right. It is a filter because I remember I got distracted because I started looking at uh, up uh, something about the uh, a, a thing called the Great Filter, which is a you know kind of a physics paradox sort of thing. And then I got I kind of lost track. And the next thing I know, uh, you know, he's stuck inside a, a closet in an RV. I thought so, you were going to talk about the band filter, because that would have been hilarious. Oh, my God. Well, you know, there's, I think they're still around touring. Uh, well, we'll discuss all of that. So let me, let me, let's jump off and first say, what was uh, maybe, uh, Lisa, your favorite part or uh, a memorable part outside the ending of this episode? Always. You always make me not talk about the ending. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember what all happened. The ending is the part that stuck out to be the most. Actually, I'll tell you what what did stick out um, is the scene with Sissy Paycheck and her grandson when they're playing chess or oh, yeah. trying to play chess, but she has a bunch of missing pieces. And then she explains to him that she's kind of using them as anchors to that world. So kind of like Inception-y, like if she sees an anchor, she knows she's in the present. If yeah, a chess piece is still spinning, well, it, you know, and Pretty not falling much. over, it's yeah. she's in a dreamland. So I thought that was interesting because... Then it really makes you question, is this all psychological for her? Like, is she getting dementia or is she actually traveling back and forth in time? I don't know. J.J. Abrams is involved, yes. So probably yes. So yeah, probably the yeah. Bull, probably the bullshit one is where we're going with this, unfortunately. I know. I, 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 know, I was losing Do you think it. it's a cop out? I was losing interest in that part. Hmm. Oh, I, I thought it was an extremely poignant way to describe Alzheimer's slash dementia as like a way to ground yourself to make sure like you know you're there. I thought that was like a really good explanation of kind of what happens actually to people. I thought it was sure. So you think it's so you think it is just what she's suffering from and it's not she's not actually jumping time. Well, I, I said it was a really good description, but in this show, yeah, you know, some stupid well, crazy yeah, no. shit's happening. I totally agree with you. I agree. If if, if it outside the context of the show, totally agree with you, Nate. I just I I I'm looking at it in the context of knowing great. We're about to do some time warpy lost bullshit with J.J. Abrams. So I'm checking out. <laughs> I was waiting for like a save the cheerleader, save the world kind of scenario <laughs> to play out. But nothing that specific happened yet. Right. No, 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 no one. No one's going there. Uh, yeah, so the chess chess match is pretty good. I did I did uh, like this. I mean, just the paycheck is collecting that paycheck for sure this season. Um, what uh, Nate? What about you? Any any scenes that stuck out to you? 
Yeah, the the scene that I enjoyed, I, my my favorite character so far in this show has probably been Molly. Uh, so she basically tells <laughs> her love interest on the show. It's like basically it's like, hey, I killed your dad, but it's like you wanted me to do it. And you were like with me and we were like making out, but like killing your dad at the same time. And then he's like, you're crazy. And she's like, yeah, but we're like, we're still going to Mac, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, nope, I'm out of here. Peace. It's like, that was, she is, she has, has all these, she has this power to like feel what people are feeling and she's just clinging to this and like, it is not working. Loved no. it. Well, it's funny. She has the power to feel what people are feeling, but she has no idea how to interact with anyone. No, no. Like, it, it, her, she's like, oh my God, this guy, I used to obsess with him when I was little like he's around me. Like now I know what I'll do. I'll say I killed your dad. <laughs> That's the way to get in. Oh, yeah. Now Molly, I, Molly. we will wait till the end of the season. Cause truthfully, I don't know. I mean, it's just kind of like the uh, untrustworthy narrator uh, or the suspect narrator sort of c- or circumstance. I don't know that I can trust her recollection of the events. Um, so I'm not willing to say that I've lost this, uh, this Kraken bet just yet. We'll find out at the end of the season. I still, I still think that she experienced it through him. Okay, I mean, she it, did it's say it possible. was like my hand was your hand. Yeah, that's what I say. It's now she did say I killed him, but she didn't. You know, it's still. I think we're still in the air about it. Or, or Nate, did you? Do you think you got some more clarity on on what happened? No, this lady cannot communicate to save her life. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I so I gotta tell you, I, I um one scene that I kind of enjoyed was yeah, the, all the Bill Skarsgård scenes in this in this show. A uh, period, it, honestly. But in this episode, I have never seen someone look so bad in a in a suit before, outside of when I look in the mirror. Uh it is it is rough. It is like three sizes too big for this dude. It, it, um, he Bill Skarsgård is almost getting to like Nosferatu levels. Oh yeah, like he's I mean, getting th- close to that. But this is what most most people most like college students look like when they go for like career day. You know, they just grab a suit, like they borrow like their dad's suit or something. And just like yeah, this this doesn't fit, but it's fine. <laughs> Let me go interview but, with it. It like looks- the way they make his face look though too. I mean, oh my, I, it's like. It looks like he's on a hunger strike, but like also wants to murder you. It's really weird. I can't, I can't even explain yeah, they did. it. I think they did contour makeup on him because he looks very sullen. Yeah, he's very temple of the dog. He's he's going hungry and it's it's not working. Yeah, I've grown tired stealing souls from. <laughs> <laughs> and let's let's just get into it now. I mean, he basically makes a mental institution catch on fire. So that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, when we were watching at least I know you you were saying that was one of your one like holy hell kind of thing. Yeah. And it's so subtle. Yeah, because I mean Alan is in the junkyard looking for the warden's car, gets out of the truck, and then it's in the background. Ten people dead, five people escaped, and it's like, uh oh. That's not good. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was very subtle, surprisingly. You know, you would have thought maybe there would have been a little bit more um a little bit more to it, but no, it's just very light. Like you, I guess I'm, I'm waiting. I'm surprised Henry hadn't hurt. Didn't get the news yet. Well, I, I think that you already but saw I think the he prison was in the scene. Forest. You know, they're like, they want to, they can't keep doing the same no. thing. So they're kind of, they, they, they made that one a little more background. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I like that. It was background. I'm just surprised if, that Henry's not the one that kind of, you know, like maybe was listening. We, we got it from a, an Allen clip, I guess. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, after someone says, hey, I murdered your dad a long time ago and I was through you and you were me, you're like, yeah, I'm going to check my phone for a while. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about, I think, what the, the really the media scene in this episode, besides, again, the ending. Um, he meets the <laughs> he meets these uh, t- uh, two random people out in an RV in well, a van down by the river. So, so the opening scene is him at his father's Funeral? Re-funeral. Re-funeral? I don't know what they call it. Is that like renewing your wedding vows? I don't know. Is a is a re recommitting. Re yeah, <laughs> yeah, a recommitment to the ground. Well, the the way this scene is set up is so great. 
for our younger listeners, they might not know this. God, we're so old. But it was very Blair Witch esque. Uh, but they had that he had the big camcorder with the VHS tape, and he was following it into the woods. I mean, that's that's a pretty great opening for a scene. Yeah. Is that how it opens? I thought it would open at him at his father's funeral. I think it opened there and then it, and then it cut to him at his father's funeral. Oh, well, yeah. my point well, well, being then, at his father's funeral, there were two randos that got into an RV and he didn't know who they were. Yeah. Yeah. And then he and then he saw them after doing the Blair Witch move and he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll chat with those guys. What? Yikes. So not a smart move. Yeah. No. So he, he chats with them after he's been wandering in the woods trying to figure out what was going on with those tapes, what you know, trying to make sense of some things. Uh, one of the guys is, is, is deaf. And so he has a translator. Um, uh, he's, he's actually perfect, Mitch, but well, right. well, yeah. You know, that's, that's how we view every, every handicapped person. The point being <laughs> in the, in this situation, he starts to explain that his father, you know, w- I guess sort of believe, I mean, was a very religious man, but also believed in this sort of theory of these noises, something called a schism, schisma, schism, yeah, yeah, the schisma of the universe. You haven't heard of this, Mitch? Wow. Well, sorry. I, I missed that in theology class. Well, so Nate, why don't you try to explain what the hell all that was about? Okay. So the guy's like, look, I got, I got a PhD in acoustics I studied everything. I'm all I'm a man of science. It's the universe trying to get back to like a balance. It's like, how do you know that? You're an idiot. <laughs> but this guy is very convinced of it. Said a lot of mumbo jumbo that made no sense. Yeah. Because I, I actually was writing it down. And I was like, all right, which one of these is the hypothesis? Where am I testing this? None of it. This guy's the worst <laughs> scientist of all time. <laughs> But basically uh, you, he's saying, hey, there's these sounds. Your father heard it. He made these uh, n- not creepy at all recordings of you walking in the woods and him talking to you. Yikes. That, are in, that were in the basement that yeah. no one checked out until Bill Skarsgård, of course, creepiest dude ever. is like, ooh, let me watch the movies of you while you're a young kid. Ugh. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So this guy's waxing philosophical about sounds and he's and Hen, uh, Henry's tinnitus is acting. He's like, oh, no, tinnitus. You know, this common affliction that affects millions of people. No, nope, that's the schism of the universe. Well, he is, he is a special castle rock tinnitus. He, uh, you know, it's, it's only, it's only in people from castle rock. So <laughs> I, 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 mean, apparently it's all over, but there's different geographical locations where it's stronger. It's like, it's like fringe or whatever. You can like cross over to the other dimension. Oh like, yeah. On, on like the week, the week. Uh, exactly. Spots, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, it, it seems like that's exactly how the schisma works. I don't know. Every, everything lately seems to be about, you know, the universe or the world re rebalancing itself, which is so, I don't know. Seems like we're going to that well a lot and yeah, doesn't really make sense, particularly considering this guy has a, uh, you know, pretty much a, a like, negative whatever decibel you know echo chamber in his rv but let's let's like let's just take a second to appreciate there was an entire monologue done in sign language like a long monologue that was kind of awesome nope that i mean that was cool it didn't make any sense maybe it was a translation error <laughs> i i sometimes just wonder if so yeah. much what i mean his 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 we don't really know who his little translator buddy is outside of, I guess, a pupil or a, something like that. But a protege. Yeah, it's his protege. But I mean, my God, I, I mean, can we validate? We need we need some uh, ASL folks to come on and tell us. Are we? I, I, I just Googled what's the ASL word for schisma. Got nothing. So maybe, <laughs> maybe that was a key problem. That could have been it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are an ASL <laughs> speaker, please. Let us know what if that what if anything we missed. Um, yeah, so let's talk about this echo chamber. I love that he li- they live in this you know junked out RV, but somehow have like the most advanced, incredible sound isolation, like the you know the 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 traps and everything all set up in this. What I had to assume had to have been the bathroom of the RV. Uh, RVs are not really known for their closet space, so I'm not quite sure <laughs> what was co- what part of this or was, was it converted. The bedroom? I don't know. I maybe I don't know. I you know, RVs. I was, was just, 
I, I was just thinking like, yeah, you made a recording studio. Great. Uh, but yeah, that's that's basically what it looks like in the studio or in our studio right now. Yeah, I mean, I was like, you made a recording studio. All right. Great. Like, you're not that smart. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some, you know, if you go to any of those like spooky meme sites or whatever, there's always some like scary fact. If you have a room that's at negative 60 decibels, you can hear your own blood pumping. It's like, OK, sure. <laughs> Uh, so I guess that's what they were trying to go for here. I don't know. It was just weird. It's getting a little, little fringy, you know. But then, yeah, then it. This it, episode it became, really it is more psychedelic, ch- yeah, too. During that kind of scene, it was kind of. I don't know if you've seen altered states before, but it was very altered states esque. It was okay. kind of getting. It was getting uh, like yeah, like I'm hearing the universe and I'm tripping on acid kind of deal. Yeah, it's getting a little too this. I will say that this episode was you know, was less enjoyable to me than the other so far. I, this was a little more, too much JJ Abrams, a little less Steven Spielberg. Yeah. I think they're probably saving it up and, and I, I'd be interested to see what you guys think, but I think next episode is going to be awesome. Like this kind of happened earlier in the season than the prison thing happened. My assumption is this next episode is going to be awesome. Like this was a setup. Yeah, no, I think you're probably right. Um, yeah, I mean, like clearly, let's let's. I mean, with the with the ending, we can finally get into that. Uh, I mean, so we're when we start off this episode, Alan is being told he needs to go find something, and you don't really know what it is. Uh, but Skarsgård's telling them you have you have to find a way. Time is her enemy, um, in order to save you know the love of his life. So he's off at this junkyard trying to find the sheriff's, you know car where he was you know trapped in which that went well <laughs> yeah and and then in introducing in in rural maine but new york city accent guy working at the car station it's like i'm working here like oh, that and he's working for fat tony <laughs> yeah basically it was, <laughs> it was so good he's like he's not for sale blah 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 i don't know what accent that was but uh, yeah, it was not great. And then he pulls a gun on him. He's like, hey, it's all yours, bro. <laughs> like, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. They really didn't give Alan a whole lot to do this episode, which we no. we were. So Lisa and I said Sissy Paycheck was going to die. You said Alan was going to die. Nobody died. It was actually just really boring. Hey, so. hey, you don't know. We don't know. So oh. let me ask. Let, let me ask you this question uh, before we get into some of the details, because we, we, there's a lot of speculation coming for this ending. Um, Alan has to go get this car back. You're thinking what I'm, what I was asking you. Well, well yeah, I, I guess I'm, I guess my question to you is, you know, was this car and all this really necessary for, I mean, is it, is this car in the end going to be necessary and important for what Skarsgård has planned? No. no. Or was this just to get him out of the it's house? It's a distraction. It's a distraction and it's to kind of nail home the fact that he was in the trunk of that car and Alan saw him and didn't save him. Yeah. Well, it's not like, it's not like Bill Skarsgård is like your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. It's like, he's not helping you. <laughs> There's, yeah. You're going to get no help from this guy. Yeah. I, I wrote in my notes, Bill Skarsgård is the reverse secret. <laughs> <laughs> all bad things will come to you. <laughs> That that's all he does. There's no no positive is happening from doing anything that he says. So yeah, Alan is kind of a sucker, I think, in this case. Yeah. So one thing that I've been curious about is, I guess he can control who he influences, right? As far as we know, yeah. Well, I mean, because he's around Jackie Torrance last episode, and nothing bad happens to her. So I guess he can kind of focus his energy. I'm, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know enough. I, I still haven't figured out enough about the true nature of his character to speculate on what, you know, I, I do think he has some sort of I, I, I don't know. We were talking about last time he has some. I think he has some like amplification sort of ability where it's more about amplifying some of the bad, you know, the bad internal you know, tendencies people have. And that's kind of what what happened. Right. Um, so do y'all think that the very final scene, I think it's the final scene, right? When Alan goes in and the house is in shambles and he's looking for Ruth. 
Yeah. Do, so. Do, so do so. My question is. Do you guys think that Skarsgård actually did anything or do you think he just made Ruth and the grandson kind of like turn on each other and they destroyed the house? Ooh, I don't know. Nate, what do you think? Hmm. Yeah. That's, hmm. All right. So, so drill into that more, Lisa. What, g- give me Well, more. because I mean, that's his MO, right? Like the very first time we kind of see him exercise this power, he's just sitting, staring at that family yeah. And they go lo- crazy. So I wonder if he's just sitting outside the house, focusing his energy at them. Well, actually, he went in the house and took his shoes off. But if he's just focusing his energy and they they kind of go crazy. Well, and he took his shoes off, which, you know, I th- it kind of harkens back to her saying no click clacks in the house or whatever. Like her husband used to her original husband used to say. That was the other interesting thing, because she looks out the window and Skarsgård's in that suit and she goes, I could have sworn we buried your father in that suit. Uh, so I was like, <laughs> oh, so say creepy. what? So yeah. creepy. Yeah. But Al- did not he get the suit from Alan? Or at least Alan's there no, when he's, getting, where he, he's putting the suit on. He digs it up. He, like he finds old VHS tapes. He just finds the suit and puts it okay. on. Okay. Oh. So yeah, so I guess I wonder what suit was he actually buried in? Or was that same suit? I don't know. That was weird. So you think that he made Sissy Paycheck go crazy, and that's why when Alan comes back from Syracuse and getting the car and and threatening a guy, he could easily go to jail. I think (laughs) it's a definite possibility. Uh, Then he he got him out of the house so he could focus all of his evil energy on Sissy Paycheck. Interesting. Yeah. That makes sense. Do you think she's alive? That, I don't know. I keep flip-flopping. I'm not sure. I think. I think so, but. It's either her or the grand or the grandkid. Oh, that would be sad. I mean, uh, either one would be sad, but. But I, you know, I, I feel like, I feel like you're right. I think, I think you're, y'all were an episode late. I think Sissy Paycheck's dead because I, I don't think they can keep going back to this. Um, this whole, you know, is she or isn't she? Uh, you know, in terms of like, you know, she's already been hospitalized once and almost dead from jumping off a bridge. I don't think they can keep like having her almost die a whole bunch. That's true. Um, I, so I, I think th- she I, probably ate it. I think I'm going to double down. I say that two, two main characters die next episode. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to double down because, yeah, I think paycheck. I think she's done. I think so Alan's fucking- probably done, too. And I think we're getting into what the se- next one will be the seventh episode. Yeah, yeah, they got they got to start they got to start knocking down some people because there's too many characters. It's like Game of Thrones. You got you got to start whittling after a while. So do you think so, Nate? I know you don't really watch American Horror Story, but pretty much every season, everyone dies except for a couple people. Do we think that that's what's going to happen here, or do we think there's going to be a few poignant deaths and that's it? I think there's going to be mass death. Okay. It's going to be like Hamlet. It's like there's like three yeah. people left at the end. Like, that's it. I think everyone's yeah. going to die. I don't think we're going to get. I mean, how many episodes are left in this season? Four. Four. Yes. I don't yeah. think we're going to get mass deaths until the, the penultimate and, and the final. I, I mean, we may get one or two here. I mean, I think they're going to start ramping up. I don't know. If we're going to get two. I think I, I don't think uh, Alan can die until we hear more about what he knows and what he remembers. Um Certainly about that whole incident. Um, I mean, or at least Henry has to find out about it, right? I think sis, I'm going to say one. So Nate, you're saying two's dead. I say sissy's dead. Lisa, what say you? On your nobody at the start of the episode, right. nobody. By the end of it, oof, I don't know. Well, yeah, that's what we're to- <laughs> oh, okay. that's the whole thing we're saying. Well, no, 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 no. I think I think we're we're we're, we're saying two things, Nate. I think I think one one is who's dead from this initial house scene and then yeah who's who's gonna be dead by the end of the episode oh i think no one's dead right now i think two people will die by the end two male yeah, characters i agree with that okay i think i think he'll find sissy paycheck dead. you think she's already dead yeah you think that's it no one else will eat it there's been something? there's already been too many of these like bloody cliffhangers and then if they just keep doing like cliffhanger but she's fine cliffhanger yeah. But they're okay for now. Yeah, cliff. It's like it, it, there's no impact to the cliffhanger anymore. Well, th- that's I think I'm, it's got to pay off. I, it's got to pay off. It's just I think it's gonna be a question of who's dead because it could be the grandson. I think it's gonna be Sissy Paycheck, but um, it could be both. Yeah, but. yeah. That's what I'm thinking. It's gonna be like the prison scene. I, I think that this was like a 
like a placeholder kind of episode, like just like a like a little more background, and then yeah, like shit's gonna pop off. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the prison scene. Do you think that? This is actually in his head in the same way that the vid- the prison scene video thing was. Oh. Now, granted, that was more of a premonition of, into being kind of a premonition of the future. But do so you, this could also be a premonition. But I'm wondering, do you think this is actually going to end up being a premonition versus a does it actually point. happen? I don't know. Does Dang. Skarsgård, I can't remember though. Did Skarsgård have blood on him? Skarsgård, when, uh, when he, in the prison? No, 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 no. In this scene. He when did Alan on, comes his, back. on his hand okay. and it's coming from underneath his sleeve. So we don't, mm. we don't have a sense of how that happened. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's another good theory though. Yeah. The, all I gotta say is this, Bill Skarsgård is creepy as shit. This episode, he kicked it up. I think to a top notch of creepiness that I didn't think was possible. Yeah. And, uh, he, and that's just from him, like standing there staring at people. Yeah, like he's like hitting play on a VCR and then standing somewhere with clothes. Like this guy's crushing it. He's yeah, it's he's about to get typecast. Well, but but even even typecast is just creepy though. But he's been two different kinds of creepy, right? I mean, between this and Pennywise, he you know it's a lot of the same type of it's the same level of a, of a, of you know, creepiness and uneasiness, but done in totally different ways. Um. You know, and it's it's I think the last character I sort of remember that that just made people not very thrilled to see them was what the um, the clown from American Horror Story, Twisty. Yeah. Years ago when he came out, because everyone's just like, I mean, that was the whole thing with that freak show season. The show season itself wasn't that great, but everyone was like, oh, my God, this clown with the weird grin mass is that was crazy. Because he's also like like six foot six or so I mean, he's monstrous he's just a big like built oh uh, yeah just so tall people creepy. are really creepy huh is that what we're getting from this? basically if, uh, tall people are unsettling um yeah like what if you like what if there's like a what if there's like a netflix movie like next month that's like bill skarsgård in i love you <laughs> you know <I> like <laughs> oh what I don't want to see you swallow some girl's face probably in this movie like there's no way you can't be creepy somehow but yeah, you you know it would be like it'd be it, he, if he was in a rom com, he would be like this crazy. I mean, he would come across this crazy, obsessed person. I will never leave you with his like beady eyes, like just staring him down. You no, know, that's Nick Cage. Yeah, because I'm like no, the, not well. The voice was Nick Cage. I I don't. It's like, it, it, I, I won't we, leave you because I'm the residue on your soul. Like that. Right. Like that would be the level it would be happening. Right. Right. Ugh. Yeah. Ultra creepy. All right. Any other predictions for or anything you want to see in the next episode? What are you looking forward to? We already talked about deaths, but I mean, you you got to start killing people. Uh, I think we're finally going to get Henry is at least part of hit the backstory when he doesn't remember when he was a kid. We got to start seeing that because that seems like that kind of that in when yeah. Bill Skarsgård was kidnapped triggered a lot of stuff. So we, we got to yeah. see that. We saw some tapes. Hopefully we can unearth something along those lines. Nate's 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 cranking in uh what ice uh what ice cubes uh like rec or metal album or not ice cube ice tea whichever one the metal album was body count was the the big oh song. body count cop killer <laughs> body count body count that's what Nate wants to see now <laughs> he's just ready for all these people to die <laughs> I, I I was gonna go with like an Alex Jones show me the tapes but I was I, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that. So, oh, no, no, now I, now I want that drop. Uh, if there's more tape, if there's more tape stuff in the next episode, getting that drop guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lisa, what about you? What are you, what are you looking forward to finding out more about in hopefully in the next episode? I mean, it's only the seventh, so we're not going to get like full reveals of oh. like scars. Gar was behind everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what to expect right now. We're kind of in a little bit of a slow burn. I I really want to know what's going to happen with Henry because now he's just stuck in that place. And what was the point of putting him in there? And are they going to try and make him deaf? Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think we're gonna have to figure out, I think we're gonna find out more about what the schisma is. Um, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think that's probably going to be a lot of what the next episode is uh, for better or worse, hopefully for better, but mm, I'm not, not holding my breath on that. 
Well, all right. Well, I think that'll wrap up this week's bonus episode. Uh, if you have some theories about what you uh, are expecting, if you have some thoughts about this episode or anything like that, you can leave your comments on our new website on the up on this episode page. Nate, where else can they find us? Yeah, you can find us uh, at TX Pod Massacre on Twitter. Uh, you can find us on Instagram. You can email us at Texas Podcast Massacre at gmail.com. You can find us on all your podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and all your other podcast platforms. Yep. Uh, we want to thank everyone who's taken the time to uh, leave us a review on iTunes and, and some of the other areas. We've seen some on uh, um, Facebook. We've seen some kind of all over the place. Really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I've gotten some great feedback. We may have to kind of feature some some of them. Some of them made me chuckle. Um, certainly, uh, you know, please, if you do have the time, uh, give us a rating. Give us a like uh, and tell all your friends slash enemies slash People you're hiding in the uh, decrepit part of a uh, prison you're uh, you're you know, wardening. Don't tell Bill Skarsgård. Only person we don't, we don't want listening to the <laughs> podcast. Something bad will happen. Other than that, we're okay. Any of the other Skarsgård brothers, totally okay yeah, with. That's yeah, fine. We're, we're fine. We're fine. Yeah, we're fine with his brother, all vampire and everything. Just yeah, I I I, I approve of that message. <laughs> all right. Well, from all of us here at Texas Podcast Massacre, thank you so much for tuning in, and just keep telling yourself. It's only a show. Good night.